Hi folks, it's quarter past nine, it's the 14th of April, this is my take on the astrological third house. The third house is the area of one's horoscope that runs from six o'clock to seven o'clock and it relates to the third sign, that being of Gemini. So the third house carries the Gemini and concept of communication into the outside world. It is the way you handle your media, it is the way you interact with other people, whether it be through email and text or phone call, or face-to-face -face communication. It's the way you walk with them and talk with them. It's the way you share your experiences with them at the social level. It's the way you lean on the bar when you're drinking with your mates. And it's the way you dance with people when you're on the dance floor. The third house is the area of communication and one's immediate environment. Not so much the environment that you, you travel to big time, except for the brief travel, but one's immediate neighborhood. The third house rules the relationships you have with your neighbours and the people around you in your immediate environment. And also it is intimately connected with the idea of siblings, brothers and sisters. So people with a strong third house will inevitably have issues around brothers and sisters, either for positive or challenging. And obviously, depending on the aspects to the planets on the third, uh, in the third house, will determine how those sibling relationships actually exist. If you've got the sun in the third house, then you're going to be a bit of a social butterfly. You're going to be a bit of a scatterbrain, doing lots of things that do all at once. And you can spin many plates and you can multitask. But when it comes to focus and commitment and concentration, the sun in the third house isn't the best. It's the best at organizing and facilitating and coordinating, yes, but not, not single-minded focus. The moon in the third house is actually concerned with one's immediate environment and one's, one's, the bedroom or the kitchen or the living room and the state of it will be a reflection of one's own emotions. If you've got the moon in the third house, you've got an untidy house, then what does that say about your mind? Environment reflects one's emotional state. Mercury loves being in the third house because the third house is all about immediate communication and that's what Mercury does. So anyone with Mercury in the third house is going to have faster mental and intellectual responses, be quite witty and quick, quick with words. Whether they're intelligent or not depends on other things. Venus in the third house is, is quite a nice position. It's a little bit lightweight but it's superfic and superficial, but it does give a charming and eloquent and sophisticated approach to dealing with people at the one-to-one -one level and um, it doesn't suffer fools or cause people lightly. Mars in the third house does bring a power into one's communication. This is a person who will do a lot of sprinting when young or cycling. They will use a lot of mobile, mobile exercise to, to keep fit and when older their, their communication will have a degree of passion about it. It will be assertive and projective and hopefully not aggressive or confrontational. Jupiter in the third house, a uh, bit of a gas bag. Uh, it, it, it tends to go too much for the words and the big ideas and the visions, but it doesn't really look at the sort of um, actual fine detail a lot. It sees the big picture and it's a good talker. But when it comes to actually doing it, Jupiter in the third house prefers to inspire others rather than do it themselves. Saturn in the third house can indicate difficulty in communication, especially when young, or hardship with siblings, or indeed being an only child. Saturn in the third house, however, also brings, as you get older, a much greater degree of structure into the intellect and makes you structure your communication in a way that makes you actually very good at it as you get older. Uranus in the third house produces unusual attitudes towards communication. Many mime artists will have this, the same as people who use uh, body language and facial characteristic to convey meaning more than understanding. And Neptune in the third house people, um, they're, they're the people who tend to get tied up in abstract knots and lose track. And when they're trying to convey meaning all the time, when actually they should be concentrating on getting the fine details ironed out. And finally, Pluto in the third house. These are the people who, over the course of their life, view their own mental and verbal transformation over the course of life as representative of their own personal growth patterns. And they may find that they become obsessive or compulsive speakers, but as they get older, they listen a great deal more.
There you go, third house. The way you think and move and project yourself at the fast daily level into the outside world.